big selling point of electric vehicles is that they're better for the environment than conventional gas cars. They certainly look greener and you're never gonna find smog coming out of the tailpipe of an EV. But looks can be deceiving. After all, there's a battery under the hood of an EV and the electricity that powers the battery has to come from somewhere. Battery manufacturing and electricity generation have their own environmental impact. So with that in mind, are EVs really better for the environment than gas-powered cars? To find out, we're going to do a deep dive into the simple math of EV carbon emissions. What are carbon emissions? If you've heard about climate change, and I'm sure you have, you've heard about carbon emissions. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is one of the biggest drivers of climate change. It's a greenhouse gas, and that means it traps heat in the atmosphere and raises the temperature of the planet. So CO2 makes up 95 to 99% of the greenhouse gas emissions from a conventional gas-powered car. And in the United States, transportation is actually the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions. So in order to cut the country's emissions, we really need to curtail how much carbon dioxide transportation puts into the atmosphere. Globally, humans produce 36.8 gigatons of carbon dioxide emissions every year. That's a lot. If we want to avoid the worst effects of climate change, we have to cut those carbon emissions at least 60% by 2035. But tailpipes are not the only source of carbon emissions for passenger vehicles. Car manufacturing, and when it comes to EVs, producing batteries for electric cars and hybrids produce a lot of emissions too. So if we want an accurate picture of a car's impact on the environment, we need to track the full life cycle of a vehicle's emissions. That means we look at all of the carbon emissions from manufacturing and the carbon emissions that the car produces when it's on the road. There are several types of emissions to consider when you look at the full life cycle of any vehicle. First, there's manufacturing emissions, which are produced during the initial assembly of the car or of the battery. This includes emissions from mining, refining, transporting materials, and then the actual construction of the car as well. So when you look at any car, regardless of type, the manufacturing of the actual vehicle produces 9 to 10 tons, metric tons, of carbon. Uh, that's the same for electric vehicles, gas vehicles, hybrids, that's just for the car. When you look at making an EV battery, that's actually pretty carbon intensive. And in general, it produces five tons of CO2 emissions on top of making the car itself. So what that means is when you're looking at an EV compared to gas or hybrid cars, they are producing 50% more carbon dioxide when they're being manufactured, when you take into account the battery. So essentially, all electric vehicles are hitting the road with carbon emissions debt. But then you need to consider what's called upstream emissions. And that refers to the emissions that are created when you're actually powering the car. So if your car is powered by gasoline or electricity, that fuel needs to come from somewhere. For example, gasoline refinement and transportation produces a ton of carbon emissions. And in fact, electricity generation and electricity delivery produce carbon emissions too. The upstream emissions from gasoline production and transmission are roughly the same nationwide, but it turns out that the upstream emissions from electricity vary wildly depending where you live. Different electric grids use different mixes of fuel to generate electricity. So for instance, you may have electricity in one place that's generated from coal, and that's going to be very carbon intensive. And on the other hand, you may have electricity generated from hydropower or wind or solar, and that's going to be much cleaner. Over 60% of U.S. electricity still comes from non-renewable sources like natural gas or coal. And that means even if you drive an electric car, powering your vehicle creates carbon emissions. The last type of emissions is operational emissions. And this is what most people think about when you think about emissions from a car, because that's what's actually coming out of the tailpipe. And when you're talking about a gas car, about 75% of a gas car's life cycle carbon emissions come out of the tailpipe. That's over 319 grams of carbon dioxide for every mile driven. That's over four tons of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere 
every year for one car. Now, the best thing about an electric car from an environmental standpoint is that it has zero operational emissions. Driving an EV doesn't add any carbon dioxide to the atmosphere or pollution to the air. And that's why electric vehicles have become such an important part of our national and global climate goals. The big question is, does the lack of tailpipe emissions make up for the carbon emission debt that EVs incur when manufacturing their battery? EVs produce about 14 tons of CO2 during manufacturing, while gas and hybrid cars produce only about 10 tons. So can your EV ever catch up? And if so, how long does it take for an EV to break even with a similar gas car? Well, let's do the math. We're going to compare the total life cycle carbon emissions from gas, hybrid, and electric vehicles. There are a lot of possible variations, but we're going to assume averages. So in the United States, the average vehicle is driven around 13,500 miles per year, and we're going to assume it has an average overall lifespan of 200,000 miles. And that works out to be around 15 years on the road, and that's going to be true regardless of car type. First up, let's look at gas cars, which are still the most common type in the United States. We already know that manufacturing a gas car creates around 10 tons of carbon emissions, but that most of the emissions for a gas car come out of the tailpipe. Burning one gallon of gasoline creates 8.89 grams of carbon dioxide. So we can multiply those tailpipe emissions by a factor of 1.25 to account for upstream emissions from gasoline production and transportation. So the average new gas car with a fuel economy of 28 miles per gallon will generate around 400 grams of CO2 per mile. If you purchase an average brand new gas vehicle today and drive it until the odometer hits 200,000 miles, over the course of its lifetime, that car will release 80 tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. Bigger cars, of course, can make even more emissions. For instance, a gas SUV can generate between 87 and 97 tons of carbon dioxide. And a gas pickup truck can produce 109 to 115 tons. So how do EVs compare? Electric vehicles don't create any operational emissions. And that lack of tailpipe emissions is what makes EVs so much greener. Electric cars are only responsible for their manufacturing emissions and the upstream emissions to generate electricity. What it really comes down to is where you live and how your electricity is made. That has the biggest impact on the amount of carbon dioxide produced to charge your EV. The national average emission rate for an electric grid is 852 pounds of CO2 per megawatt hour. The most emission intensive grid rate is in Hawaii, which is predominantly fueled by oil, and that produces 1,633 pounds per megawatt hour. And the lowest emission rate is in upstate New York, which is not far from where I live. And they generate most of their electricity using hydropower and nuclear. So that produces only 233 pounds of CO2 per megawatt hour. So just for the baseline, an electric car is gonna produce a lot more carbon emissions to get charged if it's in Hawaii than if it's in upstate New York. And that's just because the grid produces more carbon dioxide. If you're curious about the greenhouse gas emissions where you live, you can check out Beyond the Tailpipe on fueleconomy.gov, which is one of our favorite websites at Recurrent, and you can see how different vehicles match up on your grid where you live. We know the specifics of your car's upstream emissions are going to vary based on your location and how your electricity is made, but let's see what the average carbon footprint of an electric car looks like in the U.S. So over the course of its life, a battery electric pickup will generate between 48 and a half to 51 tons of carbon dioxide. An all electric SUV is gonna generate between 39 and 42 tons. And an EV sedan is gonna be the greenest and that's gonna produce between 31 and 33 tons of carbon emissions. That's throughout its entire life cycle, including the carbon emissions 
that come from producing the EV battery. So the production of the battery is like a third of the carbon emissions for the entire life cycle of an EV sedan. That's crazy. Even the largest EV truck produces less carbon dioxide than the smallest hybrid sedan. And in general, a battery electric sedan generates less than 30% of a gas pickup truck. Even with the carbon debt from manufacturing, over the course of its life, an electric car will be responsible for fewer carbon emissions than a gas car. So when does an EV pay off that carbon debt from its manufacturing and become the greener option? How long does it take for a gas car and an electric car to break even? Well, it turns out it doesn't actually take that long. On average, it takes less than three years for an EV to break even with a hybrid and less than two years for an EV to break even with a gas car. Exactly when your car reaches that break-even point depends, of course, on what type of car you have, how your electricity is generated, and what your fuel economy is like. But even when your electricity is fueled by coal, gas cars create way more carbon emissions after just a few years. And as our electricity in the United States gets cleaner, as we get more solar, more wind power, more hydropower, our electric vehicles will get cleaner too. So. Even though manufacturing an electric vehicle produces more carbon than manufacturing a gas or a hybrid car, in the end, and that end is pretty soon, the EV will always be a greener choice. When it comes to protecting our planet, we don't need to be perfect. We just need to be better. The car you choose does make a difference.